Welcome back to the Mob Mentality Show. I'm Austin Chadwick, and uh, as always, I have Chris Lucian uh, with me. And and uh, today we'll be talking about remote mob programming patterns, and we'll be sharing some stories of things that have worked well for us while uh, transitioning to remote mob programming. And the first uh, pattern, so to speak, is uh, bandwidth back off. Uh, do you want to jump into that, Chris? Yeah. Um, so uh, this is this is kind of a technique that I think has emerged. Um, different people have different connection uh, types, right? So. Um, I like this idea of video on all the time. You can always look at your camera versus looking at your screen and you have like the, the physical movement that kind of gets, um, you know, gets you reacting in a similar way. So typically in my setup, I'll have uh, code on one screen, research on another screen, and then I'll have a camera with the, the face of a person that I'm talking to or people that I'm talking to. And so I have to physically look at it. So when I'm looking over at code, I'm looking to my right. When I'm looking at the person and talking to them, I'm looking uh, at my left. So those are the visual cues. Well, um, so obviously when people have bandwidth problems, then there's uh, this other piece of it where, um, you know, video takes up more bandwidth, sending video and receiving video. And so uh, this idea of bandwidth back off is just being okay with the fact that at times people will have to, uh, will get weird connection issues. And so the back off is kind of like, okay, if video doesn't work, then back off to uh, just voice. Um, if voice is crackling up, up or not really working, then you can even back off to chat. And so I've been in mobs now where uh, somebody can hear the team, but the team really can't hear them very well, but they're still posting ideas into the chat as they go. Um, and so uh, those are the types of things where it kind of like st stages back and back and back uh, um, to preserve bandwidth. And all of these things are kind of temporary anyway, but kind of the principle there is that um, you, you kind of start with the highest possible bandwidth communication, right? And if you're forced not to do it, so, you know, face-to-face -face communication, right now we're forced not to do it. So we have video communication. If video communication doesn't work so well, then we, we back that off and we say, okay, well, we're just forced to communicate over voice. If voice doesn't work, we back that off and communicate with chat. Um, and, uh, and in that way, we, we kind of stay at the highest bandwidth communication, but we don't lose the idea that everybody's ideas are going into the code. Um, and so specifically, uh, there was a case where we were mobbing and somebody's uh, video wasn't working so well. They were trying to tell us something, but voice wasn't working so well. They started basically pointing out things in the chat. Somebody on the team was watching the chat and, and then verbalizing those to the rest of the team as they were doing the development. And we were still able to get some really good ideas in there and, and have uh, the value that that person would normally uh, uh, contribute from a like architectural standpoint, bug standpoint, that sort of stuff. Um, but it was just, you know, chat happening uh, on a regular basis. Eventually their bandwidth came back, they went back to voice and then back to video. Um, and then we're kind of back to normal, but, but for the short time that that was a problem, it was, uh, it worked out okay. So, so that's just a kind of pattern. I've seen it. It's happened a couple times now and it's been good. Yeah, what's funny about it is uh, it's been a saying before, let's have high bandwidth communication. Yeah. But now, with everybody remote, it's the direct corollary between your bandwidth and how high bandwidth communication you can have, right? So yeah, ideally, exactly. you want, ideally, you want the face-to-face, uh, -face, right? But you need high bandwidth to have the video chat on and it to be streaming well without issues. And so that's that's the default mode, and you know our mob. We had to experiment with our home setups to have the technical high bandwidth, so we could have all the time uh, bandwidth. And so, like for me, switching to a wired connection was a huge jump. And then, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I think that's great that there are tools to still keep mobbing alive even if the bandwidth goes down, because uh, some people live in areas where they can't do anything about their uh, network service provider, right? So yeah. Uh, so the next pattern that I was going to share about was it's basically the uh, remote version of the uh, mob programming pattern edge of the mob. So if you look in uh, Jay Bazuzzi's uh, mob programming pattern library, uh, we'll put that in the show notes. Uh, there's a pattern called edge of the mob, and it's basically to help uh, increase collaboration uh, amongst, you know, maybe it's stakeholders, maybe it's people from different skill sets and different departments, maybe it's customers, maybe it's different types of engineers. And basically, you have them 
physically be near the mob so they can kind of hear what's going on and jump in and out as needed. Uh, so product owner comes to mind as that being very useful to have a product owner in the building if you're doing in-person non-remote mobbing. Uh, but the remote version of it is that basically everybody in the world is now at the edge of the mob. <laughs> All it takes is to invite someone to whatever video chat tool you're using and sh uh, screen sharing and all of a sudden they're in the, your mob. Uh, so while they're, there's kind of a hard edge to the edge of the mob, they're not hearing anything at all until you invite them. But uh, you know, recently we've done this often, pretty much daily with our product owner when we have questions, we'll just invite them into the mob session, we're sharing screens, they'll give us insight on what we should or should not be doing with the feature and we'll change it right then and there instead of waiting till the next formal meeting. Uh, we've even done this with customers when troubleshooting instead of you know, uh, just doing email back and forth, which can take forever uh, and be very low bandwidth communication <laughs> yeah. or Slack messages or whatever. Uh, we will literally just add them to the mob video call and we will help troubleshoot whatever issue they're having. And uh, it's been very helpful <laughs> mm -hmm. to, get to, to get to the bottom of it much quicker. Uh, yeah, did you have anything to add to that, Chris? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so even literally today, just before we started recording this episode, uh, I was in a mob and it, it started by inviting the product owner in and then talking about something. That kind of changed the topic and then we, we started investigating something and we were mobbing with the product owner. And then uh, just after that, we said, okay, well, we need a firmware engineer in here as well. Um, that firmware engineer pulled in another firmware engineer. And so we, we had kind of a mob of like I think nine going all looking at the screen at the same time and uh, pulling up, you know, AWS logs and things like that. And um, what was really cool about it was that, yeah, we, we, we discovered a really difficult to solve problem. And then uh, very quickly, we just had different calls go out to different people that mob grew uh pretty significantly everybody with context shared that context we solved the problem in minutes because everybody was there at the same time and then and then basically all kind of split up and went our own way and then the mob kind of continued on and so um you know this is very recent and relevant to me just because it's it's uh and i see it it's kind of like people kind of getting together and then um basically saying, okay, well, we need this person. Well, that person's available. We need this person. Well, that person's available. And so the mob's size can fluctuate depending on the difficulty of the problem. And so, uh, and I see that just happen a lot more now that, uh, you know, everybody is kind of forced into this remote situation. Um, so really, really cool kind of pattern and, and side effects of everybody being remote for sure. Yeah, and uh, just kind of a practical tip, the way I've seen other mobbers kind of make this happen is, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at email as a mob or we're looking at chat messages that come in and we first start typing, type, type, type. And then someone just says like, hey, why don't we just call them in and then we'll just solve it right now. And they're like, oh yeah, why don't we do that? And yeah. it just takes someone to recognize almost the, uh, it's, it's, oh, it's not automating it, but it's making it much more efficient, right? So it's almost yeah. like the, the smell the automationist would pick up is kind of like, look, if we continue with the chat system way, it's going to, it's going to be a trudge of like constant interruption back and forth between the chat message and yeah, and something else we're working on. Uh, yeah. So kind of going to the next pattern uh, is the uh, remote designated driver. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, I've seen it called different things uh, uh, in Twitter and on the uh, blogs and things out there. Uh, but basically with uh, in-person uh, mob programming, you know, at least for beginning mobbing, you're gonna have the uh, timer going off and it's gonna say, okay, switch driver and then the new person's driving. Uh, what I've noticed in, uh, in a workshop we recently held that had several different facilitators from all or, uh, around the world, uh, some of the facilitators did not do the traditional switching uh, with the remote style mob programming workshop. And that's because some of the tools aren't great for switching. And, and if you're just kind of having an impromptu uh, a mob workshop or you're mobbing with people you don't normally mob with and you don't have all the tools so it's easy to transition who's driving and not it becomes more painful and it's kind of uh, almost some some kind of waste in the system to be switching driver all the time uh, so what they would do is they in one mob in this workshop had a designated driver for the entire time uh, so for the full workshop uh, several hours had the same driver and everyone was the navigator I think they rotated the navigator but uh, did not rotate uh, the driver at all uh, another team had the 
driver uh, rotate, but it was more event based. And then also the navigator wasn't on a strict rotation. It was just kind of the mini navigators that people would navigate as it, as it came up. Uh, so it's similar to the bandwidth back off is, you know, work, do whatever works best for your team, right? If that's having a timer and switching all the time, uh, whether you're using something like AnyDesk or TeamViewer to share the same station or using a Git handover tool, uh, uh, well, I'll put one in the show notes that switches the code from station from computer to computer as you switch drivers. Uh, but let's say that's not working for you. You can back off to a uh, designated driver style. Uh, yeah, anything to add to that, Chris? Yeah, um, I'll just throw out there, like, uh, you know, um, I, I, I wrote the first mob timer, right? And, and the reason I did that was not because uh, we, you know, it's not because for any reason that we need to like police it or whatever. We, we actually had people literally unwilling to leave the keyboard um, because uh, the kind of working agreement was that we would, we would move off of the keyboard, right? But people in any mob can have different um, working agreements around that. And so a lot of, you know, the mob timer is there as a tool to help you stop people from typing when you don't want them typing. <laughs> um, and, uh, but beyond that, like, there's no, you know, there's no constraint to the practice in, in any way. And so, um, you know, if you're mobbing, you're mobbing. And so that just means that you are contributing, contributing the ideas and they're ending up on a computer. The rotations are a good idea to limit exhaustion and other things along those lines. But if you're, if you're, if there's a technical limitation to why you can't do that, or you need to do that less frequently, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. And it, it, when I was in person mobbing about a year ago, we uh, explicitly retroed about it and decided to have no timer. Uh, and so it was, it was, the experiment worked well and it worked well for that team at that time. Uh, and it was just kind of natural switching, like oh, I've been driving, I need a break, I'm gonna walk away and then someone else would pick it up. Yeah. Uh, and I think it makes me think of kind of theory of constraints, right? Where, you know, you relax and or uh, increase the constraint depending upon what's needed in the moment, right? And so yeah. you only you and your mob can know what's needed for you for today, this week, the next hour, et cetera. Um, yeah, so another pattern that comes to mind that uh, applies to remote, I think especially uh, for me was uh, what I'm calling the walk and talk. Uh, so. Uh, I had an experience uh, last week where it was a remote conference and literally since there was so much going on between speaking and handling the workshop, I was like hunched at my desk and did not move for like several hours <laughs> and my back hurt for days after and my shoulders and it was, it was, it was a rough experience. And uh, so I've, I've had that happen throughout my career at times. But one thing I really like about mobbing is you can uh, so to speak, be more code fit uh, <laughs> as, as you go. So if you're not driving and you're switching driver, uh, I stand up and walk around and I will throw around a football. So if you, if you join my mob, you'll see I'm often spinning around the football and I'm not driving. It's just like a nervous habit and I'll walk around and it'll help me get steps, which is healthier. And it also, uh, walking around increases blood flow, can help you think better. Uh, so it's, it's something that's helped me uh, make remote less uh, stagnant. Yeah. <laughs> stagnant physically. Uh, yeah. Have you seen anybody else doing this, uh, Chris, in your mobbing? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, from time to time, I, I also see like diligent breaks and, and uh, kind of Mavadoro style stuff where, um, you know, people have a like get up and go do something else for a while. I've also seen uh, in meetings people walking during the meetings. Um, and so uh, if you have a good enough microphone for doing that, then you could be outside and have your meeting outside sort of thing. Um, as long as it's not disruptive to other people, then, then you're good to do that too. Um, the, uh, yeah, I think the main thing is, is that, yeah, you have a whole room behind you, you have your camera and, and you can kind of get up and, and do different uh, things. And then there's other levels of that, right? But getting in that exercise is really important. Yeah, and you got to find out what's not distracting, what's what's helpful, what's too much. And I mean, kind of aside, but uh, me and my wife were watching a remote uh, conference about education, and the person Zoom had all the participants' videos on, so it was like hundreds of people with their video Zoom. <laughs> on. 
uh, and the speakers was the biggest, but you could still see through everyone else's and scroll through it. And what was funny is we were scrolling through it and there were people cooking yeah. uh, while the speaker was talking. Uh, there was people folding laundry and uh, one person was driving and the speaker called it out like, hey, I, I see you're putting messages in the chat, but you're also driving. Can you please not do that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh my. <laughs> yeah, so no, uh, no mobbing and driving, please. No mobbing and driving. Others. Well, yeah, you, you got to be driving, but at your computer, not in your car. Not in your car, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the last one we'll end on a more of a personal note is yeah. uh, during these times, uh, some people I've been working with have transitioned really well to the remote life and all the restrictions that come along with uh, that. And uh, some people are struggling with it more. And so, uh, so it's maybe a basic reminder to, you know, have frequent retros, uh, you know, once a day or multiple if possible in a Mabadero type style uh, or not. But also when you have your retros, uh, you know, it doesn't even have to formally be part of the retro, but the retro is a good time for it is it's a good time to, you know, show kindness and uh, that you care for your other people in your mob. And instead of it just being about work, you could say like, so how are you doing? How's your family? How, is, how are people affected by this? And, um, you know, we've done that in my mob and I've seen uh, people start to share about their family and it can help, you know, talking through it, help with anxiety and other things. Uh, yeah, what's been your experience, Chris? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, one thing that I've been doing is kind of either daily check-ins or uh, or icebreaker questions, and I alternate the check-ins and the icebreakers. Um, and then also just kind of like connecting. Uh, I've also seen many mobs. Um, I'll, I'll mob on different mobs uh, from time to time, and I'll see a pattern of basically just saying, how's everybody feeling? Um, what's your energy level right now? Things along those lines. Um, you know, how are you doing today and what are you bringing to the team? That, those sorts of questions can be really important to, um, you know, just like the last topic where we're talking about staying physically fit while mobbing, you also need kind of like the emotional fitness as well uh, of the team. Um, and uh, just because you're feeling fine, right, doesn't mean that everyone is. And so um, getting that kind of uh, just known within, within a mob specifically, uh, can definitely um, reflect as to why uh, people's energy levels are in different places. And so um, it also helps with kind of getting, getting away from some of the natural biases around, around intention for things and things along those lines. If we know more about each other, we're going to uh, judge each other less on the current moment and more around like intention and, and modeling and things. So um, yeah, just my thought is that I've seen it over and over again um, where it's happening. It's really great where it's not happening. You can, you can see people struggle and, and you want to just make sure that you've all kind of communicated on that level uh, for sure. Yeah. And it's uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a human thing and uh, all software development is human <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least until Chris automates it, but yeah, I only signed <laughs> up for the robots. I only signed up for the robots. <laughs> yeah. We've joked that uh, you, we'll, we'll come back to the, the building we used to mob at and we'll find Chris there with an army of robots, yeah. you know, and commanding them around. We're like, oh, what's he doing? <laughs> Automate all the things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so uh, yeah, Bob Well, and, uh, you know, check in with your, your teammates. And uh, I think that'll wrap it up for this time. But uh, please like and subscribe and share. And uh, until next time, uh, you guys have a good one. See you later. Stay well.